Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, this, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he, and to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the tasks we all have in life is trying to discern what is most important. We wonder what needs to be at the center of our lives and what can move out towards the edge. This can be true of our faith life too. We ask ourselves what, what it is that is central to what we believe. From its earliest days, the Church found it necessary to list its core beliefs. This, le this led to the formation of the creeds, for example, which we recite every Sunday. In, this, in the time of Jesus, there was a similar concern among Jews to get the core of their faith. What commandment was in a, in a category of its own among the 613 commandments of the Jewish law? This concern is behind the question put to Jesus in today's gospel reading by an expert in the Jewish law. What is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus highlighted two commandments the first one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and mind, and strength. And the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. What is common to both commandments is the word love. It is, uh, it is as if Jesus is saying, if you really want to boil down what, is, what it is that God wills for our, for our lives, is to love. Love is the center of the Jewish law. It is also, of course, the center of Jesus' life and message. If what unites these two commandments is the word love, what distinguishes them is the object of our love. In this respect, Jesus speaks of a first and second commandment. If these two commandments have a unique role within all the commandments in the Jewish law, one is more important than the other. The first and most important of the two is to love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and our, mind and our strength. We probably find it easier to get our head around the second commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves. 
we may not find it, not find it easy to do, but we understand what is meant. It is to act in a way that serves the total well-being of our neighbors. We might ask, like other, another scribe in the Gospel story, who is my neighbor? Jesus answered that question in the story of the, Samar the Samaritan who cared for the half-dead Jewish man by the roadside. We are to treat everyone as if they were a neighbor, including the stranger who crosses our path, whoever they are. Jesus is suggesting in that story that rather than trying to figure out who is and who is not my neighbor, what matter is to be a loving neighbor to all whom we encounter in life without discrimination, whether they are Jewish, Samaritans, or pagans. This is a very demanding kind of love that Jesus calls for, which brings us to the first commandment. Jesus is saying that it is our loving relation that it is our loving relationship with God that will empower us to love others in this generous way. That is why loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength is the first and greatest of the commandments. In that first commandment, we are being asked to love God with all our being. This involves acknowledging our dependence on God, recognizing how much we receive from God, and then offering all that back to God in loving gratitude. Saying Ignatius of Loyola had a strong sense of how much he had received from God and a great desire to give it all back to God. This comes through in one of his well-known prayers, take Lord and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, all my will, all that I have and possess. You Lord have given all to me, now I give it, it back to you. That prayer captures something of this all-embracing love of God that Jesus calls for in the first commandment. Jesus is suggesting that when we love God in this completely way, we will be caught up in God's love for all humanity. On the other hand, it is a striking disrespectful, disrespectful dialogue between the scribe and Jesus. The scribe's response to Jesus' answers show how much he appreciated. Well said, teacher. Jesus' subsequent response to the scribe shows how much Jesus appreciated this earnest man. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Here we have two men who would have been expected to be opponents, showing tremendous respect for each other. They each, they each appreciated the good in the other. Learning, learning to recognize the good in the other is part of the meaning of what Jesus calls in the second commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. The way that commandment is expressed suggests very strongly that we can only recognize the good in others if we have first recognized the good in ourselves. One of the refrains that run through the very first chapter of the book of Genesis is, and God saw that it was good. God's creation is essentially good, and that is especially true of the pinnacle of God's creative work, the human person. 
we are all too aware that we are far from being saints. We recognize, we recognize areas of sin within us. We struggle with dark thoughts and dark feelings. Yet, for all of that, there is a core of goodness in each one of us because we have been created by God, who alone is all good. The challenge is to recognize and honor that core of goodness in ourselves and in others. More than any human being, Jesus had that ability to celebrate the goodness of others. Time and time again, the gospel shows show him recognizing and proclaiming the goodness of people who had been written off and labeled as sinners or as people of no significance. Jesus recognized God in others and taught others to do the same. Jesus recognized God in others because he knew God. Because Jesus loved God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength, he could recognize God in places and in people where God was not normally noticed. It was Jesus' relationship with God that enabled him to recognize God, to recognize goodness, even when it was hidden from most other people. In the same way, it is our relationship with God our love of God, our putting God first that will make it possible for us to recognize God in others, to celebrate goodness of others, and to love others in that sense. Please stand and let us profess our faith.